Hello everyone, I'm M. Welcome back to Tech Block. Today we are continuing on with the Razer Edition Lian Li PC 011 Dynamic PC case. The PC build, for the most part, will be up and running by the end of this video. As you saw at the very start of the video, I added three more fans as intake to this PC case. So we're going to have three intake fans and six exhaust. Three of those six exhaust fans are going to be mounted onto the all-in-one liquid coolers radiator. But so many of you commented on part one telling me to vertically mount the radiator in this PC case. And by that I mean mount the radiator like right here on the side where these three fans currently are. So if I can, I'm gonna try and mount the radiator like that because that's what most of you told me in the comment section of part one. So chances are not gonna be mounting the radiator at the top of the case instead gonna try to mount it over on the side there. But with all that said, we have to salvage quite a few parts from a previous PC build, that being the motherboard, the CPU, possibly the graphics card, a few cables, all sorts of stuff from a PC that is sitting right there beneath the second setup. Yeah, we're gonna have to open it up and salvage most of the components out of there to use in this build. Now, the side panel is not even attached, lovely. So we have the all-in-one liquid cooler right here. Let's pop this PC build on top of the desk. Let's take the side panel off. All right, so in this PC build, we have a whole load of hardware. We have a bunch of fans from Cooler Master, a Cooler Master Phantom Gaming all-in-one liquid cooler here. More fans from Cooler Master. The entire case is from Cooler Master. There's a lot of Cooler Master stuff going on up in here. But uh, what we have to do is salvage a graphics card, this being the RTX 2060 and surprisingly enough there's pretty much no dust inside here either the dust filters inside of this case they've done a great job so here's our graphics card the rtx 2060 will this be the card we use in the final build inside of the uh, lian li pc case there this won't be the final card i end up using for this pc build but it will be the card that we end up using temporarily until the card that i actually want gets here so for now we're going to probably be using an rtx 2060 and as for the rest of the hardware in here, we are not going to be using the same RAM. We will be ditching the HyperX RAM sticks and be swapping them over for the Team Group RAM instead. So I think the first thing I should probably do here is get rid of the liquid cooler. Have our 10 gigabit network card here as well that I usually use to connect an Ethernet cable from my PC directly to my server. Have a 10 gig link there, it's always nice. Let's go ahead and take the motherboard out and pop it into our new case. All right, so we've salvaged pretty much everything we need from this old PC build. We have the motherboard here on our table and we have our wonderful RAM here as well from Team Group. So this is the T-Force DDR4 Delta RGB RAM. As for the timings and all, uh, 16, 18, 18, 18, running at 3200 megahertz. And we have a whopping 32 gigabytes here in total. So four sticks, eight gigabytes each. This is gonna be nice. This RAM inside this PC build is going to look absolutely magnificent. <laughs> Alrighty, motherboard installed, RAM installed, everything's looking good, apart from these fans here. We're going to be swapping these fans and putting them up there. So our plan is to essentially do this. Alright, so in part one you saw me mount these fans onto the radiator, then I swapped them over for these fans, and now I'm going to probably swap them over again, because I want the silver fans to be kind of displayed over here instead of them being mounted up top where you won't really be able to see them as much. So, gonna quickly swap over all the fans again. All 
right, the build's slowly coming along. We have a fan controller here from Antec for the three bottom fans there that comes with a little booklet as well. So I know how exactly to wire all of this up. All right, so we have all of the six wires from our three fans. Now in order to control all the RGB lighting effects, let's wire up all the RGB connectors here. Then we need our fan controller as well. Basically just a fan splitter here. And there we go. So everything's wired up. All we got to do is probably cable manage this a little bit better. Oh my God. Okay, so that's LED strips. We don't need those. Connect three button controller. Okay, so this goes into what? So we've connected all the fans together. We have these two cables here. Which cable do I need? What is this, man? For the Lee and Lee fans, I'm pretty sure you only need two cables and this controller. You could use this one, but I don't know how to set this up. So that says input there. Whether or not that actually means that's the input, I don't know. So this will go into the motherboard. Then we have all of the RGB controllers here that I'm not even too sure I can plug in. Actually, wait, this has a port for six fans. I think I could probably get away with plugging in every Lee and Lee fan into one fan controller. I mean, it supports six fans, so I don't see why this wouldn't work. If this turns on, that will be good. But it might not, I don't know. Okay, will this work? Hey! Right, boot test complete. It turns on, that's good. Not everything is actually plugged in. We still have a lot of work to do to actually get this thing to where we want it to be. Uh, but I just want to see if anything comes on in the monitor. Okay, that's a good sign. I've only plugged the monitor in, no peripherals or anything, so no keyboard detected. I just kind of want to make sure that this PC actually works before we continue on. Okay, it's all good. <laughs> Taking a look inside, we have the uh, dual ring RGB fans from Antec. There's intake. We have, oh my God, I think everything has just synced up with Asus Aura. And <laughs> every LED here has set itself to red apart from these guys. Um, you may be wondering why the fan LEDs for the top Lee and Lee fans aren't on. Well, I may have ran out of RGB headers on the motherboard, which of course is a little bit of a problem. So I'm gonna see if I can get a splitter. That might resolve the problem. Or what I could do is instead of plugging in the RGB cables for the bottom fans there from Antec, I could use that RGB header on the top Lee and Lee fans instead. Right, so I'm gonna shut the PC down and then we'll We'll swap the fans over. Okay, I think I might have swapped them over. Let's press start. Hey, we did. And the bottom ones are still on. Well, it's a miracle, everything works. <laughs> right, so now the build's looking a bit more normal. The top fans are on, these fans are on. And in person, these Lee and Lee fans actually look absolutely amazing. Like, they look really good. Like the colors on them are very saturated, very vibrant. The entire PC build is looking pretty damn good. And once it gets into Windows, everything kind of switches to the color red, because I'm pretty sure that's what I've programmed in Asus Aura. The last time I used it on that motherboard, uh, I guess everything just automatically set to red. I'm glad that the PC actually works, but there's still a lot we have to do in terms of cable management. Oh man, and actually plugging in like all the other cables that came with this. Because there's meant to be RGB underglow beneath the PC um, and all sorts of crazy like lighting effects all over this case that come with the case because it's like the Razer Edition one, but I just haven't plugged in any of those cables just yet. Like the amount of cables behind here is, is worrying. Like look behind this PC case, this is gonna be a nightmare to cable manage. But at least our power supply is RGB. That's from thermal take there. And we will be able to, I think, sync that up with Razer Chroma as well. Not sure about the Lee and Lee fans, but I will let you know once we're actually up and running. So in part three, there'll probably be a lot to do with software and how to control all the RGB effects and all. But yeah, I think I have to fix this horrible cable mess first and actually finish up most of the build in part three of this series. Thank you all so much for watching. That's where I'm gonna be ending it today. Link in the description to all of the stuff featured, all of the products, everything will be down below in the description there for you in case you wanna go check it out yourself. Look how much the prices are for all these different products. 
maybe buying yourself. All right, I'm really tired. I've been building this PC for like three hours. I was very confused a lot of the time because of like the amount of cables that came with these fans. It drove me crazy for a little while, but hey, they all work. And uh, as for all the Lee and Lee fans, they're actually all plugged in to a single fan controller, which is good. But the Antec ones, they're plugged into their own controller. Wait a minute, can I actually adjust? Oh wait. No way. Hey look, everything's set to red now. Turns out we can adjust all the RGB effects for the bottom fans using their controller. Unfortunately, I'd have to be inside of the case to actually press the buttons on, on the controller. But hey, you can control it all. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get going. We have a lot of stuff still left to do with this PC, especially when it comes to cable management. Yeah, I'll see you guys in part three.